police promotion, see 2,000 people were gathered up. And when they were taken to police stations, there were previous warrants against many of them. And then they didn't have a place to put them, so very quickly um, a prison, a warehouse was adapted uh, in the area of Santa Rosa. And the residents there have taken objection to this. excited by the spirit of change that I see here. This afternoon, spent the afternoon at Santa Rosa Prison with prisoners and guards notably in a workshop on mediation. It was quite animated and there's a lot of energy there and a will to try mediation in its various forms. Particularly between guards and prisoners, and a kind of discussion, a spontaneous one that broke out, for many was the first opportunity they had had to talk freely about their feelings, about their experiences with one another, guards to prisoners and prisoners to guards. And I could see that they learned to look one another in the eye. I could see that they learned uh, that they weren't all monoliths, that there were individual human beings there. It was a really inspiring experience. There were mediators there, and Trinidad is blessed with a number of experienced mediators uh, who will probably carry forward. So I'm looking forward to Trinidad in this particular respect, perhaps doing something that hasn't been done anywhere in the world, and I'm sure that that's not the only kind of innovation that will come here. The International Conference on Prison Abolition began in 1983 in Toronto, Canada. It was organized chiefly by Ruth Morris, who um, was a Quaker peace activist and prison abolitionist. And her group continues now as Quakers Fostering Justice in Canada, who are likely to be at the center of organizing the next ICOPA when we return home in two years to Canada. ICOPA has met Everywhere, I think, on every continent except Antarctica and the Asian mainland. Uh, we have here organizers from the past. Uh, we have Red Collins, who organized the 12th International Conference on Penal Abolition with a group called Justice Action, which was founded centrally by former prisoners. Uh, and that was the 12th conference. statistics on every health indicator uh, are that Maori are very disadvantaged. But uh, Maori aren't fighting it as such now because they're becoming educated. They're probably the, the, the foremost indigenous group of people in the world who are now fighting for this which I support them through in the courts. In the last 15 years, money has poured into groups, service clubs, rotary clubs, churches, who have listened to for 15 years that the work such as earlier intervention or NGOs that we're doing is futile and the only way that <coughs> New Zealand can be back again to what it was, or a good God-fearing country as they call it, was to return to um, punishment, punitive punishment, and as their agenda which they don't often bring out, is resulting in the death penalty. Now, it got to the stage in the last 15 years that, that we all were marginalised totally and it's only in the last year through criminologists and universities were marginalised. Every person that spoke about what Frank's speaking about was marginalised. Now beware of any right-wing wealthy movement that comes in to, try, to take away the benefit of long-term prevention which is taking place now and I understand in some of your prisons you're looking for reform. So if you are or you've got any good news through Brett and I, we'll tell the world how good you are. But, but beware of going back into punitive days because wealthy. Once living a life of crime and fame, living a life of sorrow and pain, not knowing who I really was, I hungered and thirst for a worthy cause. 
took to the streets to find the answer, only to end up being a gangster. Having the influence of many, they'll do anything for money. Crime, drugs, and all its ills, I said to myself, this can't be God's will. Friends, I thought to me were there. Little did I know, they didn't care. Betrayal, envy, disrespect, and deceit. These are the characters out on the streets. It wasn't long before I'd known my fate. I allowed the enemy to use me as bait. Now charged with a crime I did commit, I'm not angry that society calls me a misfit. Realizing the harm and hurt that I have done, I'm seeking to right all that I did wrong. Finding my identity, that's what I did. Understanding God's purpose and His will, growing stronger and wiser each and every day, making use of every program that comes my way. To rebuild and reshape my life, I must in order to fulfill my life's purpose. I must rebuild what I have broken down. I must restore to restitution. Responsibility, accountability, given the opportunity is what my heart desires to give back to my community. But before I do this, I must say sorry for my irresponsibility. Now given the opportunity, I have started giving back to society. To restore is to give back, replace, and reconstruct. This is what I have vowed to develop. Seeking ways and means to build positively, mentally, educationally, and most of all, spiritually. Now that I'm going through my transformation, repairing the harm done is my sole solution. I must re take responsibility for my action and balance the scale of justice to restoration. Thank you.